I was recently in the Make Money Make Sense in Real Estate podcast with Dante Belmonte, and he and his partner DJ asked me, how do you, from my book, systematically keep connections with so many brokers so that those brokers will bring you lots of deals? Stick around, we're gonna walk through those steps real quick. Let's go! All right, so chapter two of my book, Multifamily Investors Who Dominate, is all about the system. It's called Elite Investors Don't Source Deals, The Deals Come to Them. And it's so true. Elite investors are not sitting around waiting for a listing to come on LoopNet or MLS or an email across their desk. Their time is spent automating their connections with brokers so that their pipeline is deep. Take a listen. So for investors then, building these relationships with brokers, one of the things I really appreciated about you and the videos that you put out is just how tuned in and dialed in you are relative to relationships. Really important. So for those investors that are out there looking at properties, whether they have them, whether they're new, what should we be doing to build our relationships with brokers? and let them know that we're a serious buyer. If you really want to get good at this, most folks get scared about technology. Depending on how many markets you're covering, like I cover the whole northern half of Florida. I do that because that produces enough transactions based on my market share where I can make the amount of money I want to make. I tell you that because the same thing should be done for investors. The number of markets you cover should be dictated by how many of those deals you think you can buy and therefore how much money you guys want to make as partners. In order to do that, for the northern half of Florida, I have calculated there are 60 multifamily brokers. Now, the top 20% are the ones doing most of the volume. So 12 brokers are doing the majority of the volume, but you want to be talking to all 60 because those other 48 brokers do between one and say six or seven deals a year. You can't communicate with 60 different brokers just remembering this stuff. You have to automate it and you have to have a CRM. I use a CRM called RealNex. Doesn't matter which one you own. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Salesforce and Apto and all this stuff. The important part is actually using it. I would find out every single multifamily broker in every market you cover. All you have to do is Google them, go on LoopNet, go on CoStar. You can Google multifamily broker Jacksonville. They're all going to pop up. You'll start seeing them. And within an hour, you'll pretty much figured out all of them. You're going to then import them into a CRM with all their contact information, pictures of them, emails, all this stuff. Then you're going to automate this. And what I mean by that is, is you're going to schedule every four to six weeks for every one of those brokers spaced out. So you aren't doing 60 in one day, spaced out over a number of days so that every day you've basically got two to four brokers that you're calling. That's not a big deal. Most of those calls, you probably won't reach them the first time because they're busy and they're gonna have to call you back. And by the time you guys play phone tag, it's been two days. And some of these calls will last three or four minutes. Some of them will go 30 minutes, depending on the conversation. But until you automate this, if you just try to remember calling these guys, then what happens is you only call the top 20%. You're only gonna be calling Bo and Joe and John because that's the ones that you remember the most. That's the ones doing the most transactions. But you wanna have that huge reach. And so once you automate it, every day when you come in, your CRM and you type in today, it tells you the exact guys you're calling. And when you call them, you're taking notes. And in the beginning, so you aren't creepy, you aren't talking about family and kids right off the bat. It's more like an introductory call. Like, hey, my name's DJ. I'm, a, I'm an investor in South Carolina. I, I looked you up online. Looks like you do some great business. I love the way you present yourself. I like your marketing packages. Would like to get to know you. So-and-so told me about you. Hey, here's what we're looking for. Tell me what I can do to get on your list so that I can see the listings that you get. We react very quickly. We're going to tell you yes or no right off that. So you're doing all this stuff to make the broker feel like, all right, this guy gets it. He gets how my brokerage world works. He gets how important it is for me to be able to respond to sellers and give feedback. So that's your initial phone call. And then you're immediately as you, whatever it is that you find out about that broker during that conversation, maybe you guys talk about cars or you talk about golf, whatever it is, just something, just something light. You're making notes. Hey, Bo loves Porsche cars. The guy's a fanatic about it. And then you're scheduling it right away. As soon as you hang up that call, if you don't schedule it, that's one of the 69 brokers who's going to do five to 10 to 15 deals a year 
here for the next 20 years. You just lost them just because you didn't schedule. You got to schedule it. So you're scheduled in six weeks, you're going to call Bo again. And when six week come, call comes up, you're reading your notes. After a year, after two years, you get a whole thing of notes. You start to get to know each other. Maybe you go to a car show together. You play golf together. You have a beer together. Whenever you're in town, checking out a property, you're calling up Bo and say, hey, I'm going to be in town on Thursday. We should get to dinner for lunch. So you can imagine, like I talk about my book on these elite investors, over the course of five, 10, 20 years, every six weeks, you're touching on these 60 brokers and you're developing relationships and you're talking about family and you're talking about hobbies and sports and deaths in the family. And, oh, did you hear about this? And it's like, it's not just about business, but you do that over a long period of time. You can see how when Bo gets a new listing, I'm tipping off 15 or 20 of my favorite friends who are some of the best investors in the world three or four weeks before that listing even hits a website. Now he may still have to compete, but the reason six days after a listing hits the market, there's 13 offers is not because they're geniuses who in six days were able to underwrite it. I gave them a month's head up. They knew about it a month ahead of time. Now that also benefits for my seller. I just grabbed the best investors in the country. I'm not grabbing the guy who only owns one asset just because I like him because I, I need him to make me look good. I need him to, to buy this thing and close on it, not retrade. I'm calling some of the best guys who consistently buy and don't retrade trade and don't bad mouth and don't make me look bad and all that stuff. These are the guys I'm calling first. Now, they don't always win it. There could be some other guys who I know very well and who know me. They just aren't in love with me like I'm in love with them. Sometimes those guys win it. But the point is, is that you want to know about every listing that comes in the market. So the whole book is right. about this right here. I call it the love factor. So when I show you that there were a hundred closings in the markets that you cover that are of the asset that you would buy, and I showed you that list and I said, Dante, how many of these did you actually know about? And your answer is 10. You ain't doing things right. Right. It's poor. You ain't doing things right. That means that there are majority of the brokers, since brokers are doing over 90% of all closings, anything that's over 10 units, and the bigger the asset is, it's closer to 100%. So that means the majority of those brokers aren't thinking about you because you're not thinking about them. It's not like we like to have our back rubbed and feel special. This is just human nature, guys. This is just yeah. like people do business with their friends. It's why I have in my career, I've lost big listings. I can remember last year, there was a 75 unit listing that was for $8 million. I lost the listing to a residential broker. They've Oof. never sold, not even an apartment complex, but the seller goes to church with them and they've been long-term friends. Mm. That's rare. Okay, that seller made a stupid move, but that's how important relationships are in this business. And we hear about that all the time. The problem is, is that until you automate this, most guys are calling the top 20% brokers. If you can cover all of them, those other 48 brokers, that other 80%, if you could just grab one or two extra transactions in a 10 year period and you made seven figures on each, was it worth hundreds of hours of having to communicate and talk to these guys over a 10 year period? Hell yeah, it yeah. is to me, it would be to me. Yeah, no, exactly. You see, creating this list and automating it, that's the easy part. Actually making the calls consistently month after month, year after year, that's where the power comes in. The reality is, is that many of the people watching this video right now won't do step one, which is just creating the list of multifamily brokers. You can get all the names of the brokers and the markets you work in by Googling multifamily real estate brokers in whatever market you're going after. You can go to LoopNet, CoStar, Crexy. There's lots of different listing websites. Go to each brokerage website and get all the names from the brokerage website based on the territory they cover. Put all the names in an Excel spreadsheet, import into a CRM, schedule those phone calls on a reoccurring basis, and you're gold. I make it sound simple, but there is a lot of work involved, which is what you want. The harder this is, the more work involved, the less competition you're going to have. I hope this video brought you a lot of value. And if it did, give me a like and a subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.